Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and I just want to welcome you to this week's service. I pray that last week the service blessed you and encouraged you. We have another powerful and encouraging message this week. And I also just want to say, if last week's message did bless you, that you would share this with your family and friends. So without any further ado, I pray that you would just sit back and enjoy this service this morning. God bless you and thank you. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy and mighty name. I am excited to be here today and to be with you online to praise the Lord and talk about his word today. I am ready to get in the word of God. Why? Because it is life to us. Amen. So we're going to walk in the word of God. We're going to allow the word to have its place to transform us, to change us, to have encounters with the most high. Oh, Lord, I'm ready. Father God. Uh, that you would anoint your word in our ears, Father, and anoint our ears to be able to receive the power of your word to be changed, to be edified, to be strengthened, and be transformed by the power of the word of God. And everybody said, amen, amen. Well, in the last few years, we've been doing a lot of messages. I'm going to do a rehearsal or a review of those messages. The reason is because looking forward, we have very little light. The Bible tells us that we see through a glass darkly when we're looking forward. So we know in part and see in part. But when you look back, you know, the, the famous saying, which is not in the Bible, but, you know, when you look behind you, you can see there's, you've got 2020 vision. So we can actually take a look in the recent history of our life and see that God's been working a plan. You might not be able to see the, all the plan for the future, but... If you're, in, if, you, if you're dealing with the things of the Spirit of God, you surely, as a spirit being, ought to be able to see the things that God has, has strengthened you with in the past. And that's when things really get exciting to me. Well, um, God has been giving us restoring messages for the last couple of years. He literally has been bringing us to this time and, and uh, getting us ready for this hour. Uh, some of the messages that God has been ministering is restoring a heart after God. Yeah, I've noticed, and I said this last uh, message, that I've noticed a lot of people that just had lost their passion. And uh, it's been a theme of my life, get the passion back. Amen. Uh, also, first love. It should not be that we have our first love only, but we have first love plus. We should grow beyond our first love. So this is a good time and a good season to say, yes, Lord, I want to have the first love and more. Um, also, we've decided to, to, uh, that it, it, every day is an encounter, an encounter with God. So we need to have ongoing encounters with the Lord. God wants to encounter us. We have to take the time and, and get our heart uh, uh, humble before him, and we'll have encounters with God. We've talked a lot about forgiveness. Matter of fact, it's been one of those messages that I've actually recognized and seen and actually talked to people that actually Christians that refuse to move forward in the areas of forgiveness. And that really bothers me that children of God are not walking in the fullness of forgiveness. What does the Bible say? Oh, no man anything except to love them. So the Bible tells us that if we're going to be forgiven, we have to forgive. So that is the requirement. If your brother has ought against you, go to him. If he sinned against you, go to him. For every reason, any reason that your heart is in wrong uh, against your brother or sister, we have to work forgiveness. And, of course, that starts with humility. We've taught a lot about humility. Um, for God gives grace to the humble. Therefore, without humility, there is no grace. We have to have humility. And humility is the foundation to receive everything from God because it is the essence and the key, the foundation of all grace. Um, also, we talked about fullness of joy. I, you know, right here today, starting now, every believer ought to say, today's my day to rejoice. This, there should be a time during the day that you take time to just go ahead and rejoice before the Lord so that we can be filled with the fullness of joy. The Bible tells us, count it all joy, brethren, when you fall into diverse trials. So here's what people do. They go, they read that verse or they hear a message, you know, have joy. And then they go, ah, I don't want to do that. 
They do. They just, I don't want to do that. I don't feel like it today. Well, God didn't tell you to do it because you feel like it. God says it because he wants you to do it for yourself, not for him. So this is a weapon against oppression and discouragement and anxiety. So we have to learn how to put our joy to the fullest, as the Bible says, fullness of joy. To the fullest. Say to the fullest. It is to the fullest that we have to have joy. Amen. We've talked about church authority or dominion of the body of Christ. That we don't have to be reacting to the circumstances, but we need to be in the place where we are actually in command of the spiritual life of the body of Christ so we can declare and decree what God's plan is. If you don't know you have authority, you'll sit back and just uh, talk what the world talks and you'll be reactive to what the world says. But when you have the Spirit of God and you, knew, and you know the authority that Christ has placed in you, I'm not talking about arrogance, I'm not talking about pride, but the authority that Jesus has placed within you, then you can speak forth and declare and decree the things of God and you will see things change. Okay. We talked about having spiritual mindedness, <laughs> meaning uh, we're spirit beings. We need to not just be people of logic, worldly logic, but people of divine logic. Divine logic is in the scriptures. Divine logic is what God says and does. To be honest with you, he, his ways are higher than our ways, but as we grow in the spirit, we grow in actually divine wisdom so we can have spiritual mindedness. He also has been teaching us not to tolerate anxiety. Not to tolerate worry. And not to tolerate any fear. Remember, as we taught before, if you've been listening or been here at the church, uh, if you ha haven't been, here's what we taught. Anxiety, worries, and fears are demonic influences. God hath not given you the spirit of fear. They are demonic. Meaning this, it's an armed man breaking into your house. And what are you going to do about it? Well, we have to fight a good fight. Um, a quote here from Theodore Roosevelt. Um, kind of give you a prelude to this quote. What has happened in his life at this moment was that um, uh, his wife, his mother, died on the exact same day within hours of each other from different uh, illnesses. Um, this was before he was president, so uh, he was distraught, obviously, uh, beyond consolence. He moved out into the, um, into the um, Dakota Territory. He had already been out there hunting, uh, but he moved out and actually stayed for about five or six years out into Dakota. He actually started a ranch out there, and he was going to stay out there um, <laughs> until the worst snow in the history of the western United States took place, and all the cattle died, but... <clears throat> but Here's what he said about, uh, about fear. There are all kinds of things I was afraid of at first, meaning being out in the Dakotas. Uh, he said, uh, ranging from grizzly bears to mean horses to gunfighters, but by acting as if I was not afraid, I gradually ceased to be afraid. Now, what is he doing is he's using biblical principle, whether he knew it or not, to be able to deal with the demon of fear. And what he did was he faced it down, and he, uh, and he won over it and grew out of it so that even, even those that uh, in having natural means, there are some natural uh, uh, weapons that we can use, such as stepping, facing fear, and not running from it, and you can defeat it in its tracks. And so here's a man that you would never dream of that had fears. Because of all, this guy was like a, a San Juan Hill. You remember the charge up at the San Juan Hill. He had guys uh, in several occasion, uh, occasions in the battle, he had several guys die in the battle right next to him. One of them was, was hit with a, a cannon shell. I mean, that's pretty bad. And uh, the other one shot beside him. And he still uh, charged up San Juan Hill. He had to face his fears. And he had to conquer them. Why? Because he had to learn how to overcome those things. And so, uh, listen, that's something we all have to learn, to overcome. Another thing that we taught on for quite a while, and we're still teaching on, is faith. 
I don't think we'll ever get rid of that message. Why? Because we taught on how to have it and how to fight a good fight with faith. It's because of faith in what God said we can fight everything that is coming in our life against what God's will is. So uh, also we taught along the lines of giving. Matter of fact, in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 8, it says this. It tells us that the proof of our love is our giving. So if you love God, you're giving. So it's a part of, of the love that we have for God. Also, we taught on a good confession, making a good declaration. Um, I tell you what, there's just something about just walking around praying and start declaring and decreeing what God's word says. Uh, this is why preachers, a lot of times, they'll say this. Well, I just preached myself happy. Well, what does that mean? Well, you're declaring and decreeing the word of God, and as you're speaking it, it, the power of God manifests over you. That's just the way it happens. And so we get to eat of this uh, of the anointing that you get to hear. We're actually getting to proclaim it. And uh, that's why we encourage people to shout out amen, praise the Lord, and hallelujah, because we're decree decreeing and declaring what God is. God is good, amen. God is faithful, amen. Amen. Also, we talked about this. We talked about literal faith. Literal faith is you read it. You don't try to throw it away by how you, you know, if I, you know I, I have to reason this out. And you kind of reason things away. Well, God said that if, if I abide in him and his word abides in me, I can ask what I will. Well, maybe that was for the apostles back then. Well, maybe that works for somebody. Well, what? No, it's literal. It literally means do this and God will do his part. That's what it really means. So we talked about literal faith in the word of God. Also, change thinking. And we can't go by that. If you're going to grow, you have. We can't, we, if we're going to grow, we can't think the way we thought yesterday. Change thinking is so important. Before, as a man is, uh, is, is the way he thinks. So as a man thinketh, so is he. So we have to change the way we think. We can't keep going, um, thinking the way we did yesterday if we're expecting to grow today. So what has to change? Our thinking. How does it change? By renewing that mind with the Word of God. That is absolutely the truth. So every day I wake up and go, how today am I going to think different than I did yesterday? you got to think about those things. How am I going to think differently and think more and grow in the things of, of the Lord and be ready for this day. Amen. So God has brought us to this time, to this day. If you look back, he's been equipping and training us to stand strong in the day of, of adversity. That's exactly what he's done. Uh, God has been preparing us for the, the things that are to come. Um, he has prepared us for right now right now. What does that tell us? Well, that tells us that God's been, it's, first of all, it's no surprise to God. Secondly, God's been preparing us because he knows the path, he knows the way, he knows the future. And he's not left us nor abandoned us. Hallelujah. Isn't that good news? Um, the, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 13 it says, to stand your ground in the day, uh, the evil day or the day of adversity. we got to be able to stand our ground. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3 says this, Endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. There will be days. We knew that they were going to come because a generation that doesn't have hardship cannot grow because we grow by the trials and the tests that happen around us and that happen to us. So God's plan has been to strengthen us and to grow us. Let us stand strong in this hour. Why? Because if you look back over the last few years, He's been working a plan. A matter of fact, some people, you know, some pastors would like to take uh, some uh, credit for the path. Um, I can't. You know, uh, it's a week by week, day by day, inspirational message, divine impartation. It's never been a month plan, a year plan of a progression of what we're going to teach. It's just been leaning on the Lord, expecting Him to give a divine impartation for a divine revelation. And that's exactly what's happened. And if you put them all together in sequence, it's been an amazing journey of God working in us to will and do of his good pleasure. That's exactly what he has done. Now, we're going to go to Romans chapter 8. We're going to start in verse 27. First of all, Romans chapter 8, 
wow, the greatest chapter of doctrine in the entire Bible, I, maybe one of the greatest words ever written in history, obviously. Um, we're going to start in verse 27. A lot of people don't start there. Pastors usually don't start in verse 27. But I'm going to start there because there's some things you need to see as we go forward. Verse 27 says this, Now he who searches the hearts knows the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. In that verse, you have the fullness of the Godhead. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost all in there. And it's talking about and it's getting ready to reveal why. But let's go back and look at it. What's the Godhead? Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind. So if he searches the hearts is God. God the Father, the Bible tells us he searches the hearts. Okay, And the mind of the Spirit. Well, what Spirit? The Holy Spirit, right? Amen. Uh, because he makes intercession for the saints. Well, who does that? Well, Jesus sits at the right hand of God the Father making intercession for the saints. So this is re the revelation of the Godhead doing this. Are you ready? Uh, he is doing the will of God for, go to the next verse. Who's he doing the will of God for? For, and we know that all things work together for the good of those that love God and those who are called according to his purpose. That's us. So all of the Godhead is working for our behalf so that we can actually do the purposes of God. So he has been preparing us for the purposes of God. Hallelujah. So the Godhead is working all things together for our good. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. For all, it's all for our good. Amen. Verse 29. From whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Verse 30. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called in the predestination of God that he's been working in our past for our future. I just want you to soak on that for a moment. He's been working in your past for your future. So he has been ordaining, equipping, training, discipling for our future, for this day and for this hour, so that our foot would not stumble so that we would not be cast down, so we would not be discouraged, so that anxiety could not take hold of us. Listen, remember anxiety, fear, and worry, they're armed enemies coming in to your house. What are you going to do about it? Well, it's rhetorical. You're going to, you're going to pull out the guns of God and take care of business. Amen. Okay. Um, verse 30 again. For whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he justified. Whom he justified, these he also glorified. Verse 31. What then shall we say of these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? So God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit are working on your behalf. And they've been working in, in, over the years and particularly in the last couple of years of training and equipping us to stand in faith strong in any hour of any trial. I tell you what, that's good, that's good rejoicing. God's for me. God's got my back. God, God is with me. Amen. That, he's with us. Amen. Uh, who, verse 33, who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? That's a rhetorical question, meaning nobody has the right to throw con condemnation upon you when you're walking after God. It is Christ who died and furthermore who has risen, who is even at the right hand of God, there it is, uh, who also makes intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Rhetorical. No one. Shall tribulation? Say no. Shall distress? Say no. Shall persecution? No. Shall famine? No. Or pestilence, you can put that in there. Shall nakedness? No. That means not having provision. Shall peril or sword? No. As it is written, and this is written about persecution, for your sake we are killed all the day long, we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Verse 37, yet in all these things we're more than conquerors through him who loved us. What are we? 
We're more than conquerors. More than conquerors. In all these things, we are more than conquerors. In all things, anything, we are more than conquerors. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things uh, to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. What a powerful verse of encouragement to recognize we are under God's destiny. You are. You are under the destiny of God. Walk with Him. You cannot fail. Step away from Him. You're failing. Just walk with God. You cannot fail. Amen. Uh, you can do this right now. You can make it. If you remember me saying something about the vision I had uh, 46 years ago, at age 18, the very first week of my salvation, God gave me an extended vision during that week of what I would be doing in my entire life. I don't know very, very many people that have had that, but I have had that. At the, one of the latter parts of the vision was this. When I'm old and gray-haired, I'd be going from house to house encouraging people, and I would say, you can make it. That was the theme. You can do it. So that was actually in the vision. I would say to them, they'd knock on somebody's door, they'd open the door, and I was going to old cabins and old houses that were kind of rustic, and, and I remember that in the vision. So uh, meaning this, uh, prophetically, you could simply say that people's dwelling was kind of uh, in shambles, beat down, wore down. That's kind of what it means, okay, prophetically. So I'd knock on the, the old rotten door, and, and people would open the door, and they'd stand in their doorway, and I'd say, you can do it. You can make it. And so you can. This is the hour. This is a good time to declare you can make it in Christ. Amen. This, this is something God, God gave this for the body of Christ through me, it to me 46 years ago. But I'll be honest with you, he didn't create it 46 years ago. He just let me in on it 46 years ago. But I want you to know you're predestined before the foundation of the world. To be his children, to be his heirs to the kingdom. Nothing's a surprise to God. Nothing is out of the hand of God. If we will put our faith in him, we will walk in the hands of God. Amen. When I was younger... I wonder how the enemy really works. I've, I've heard this. I think the enemy senses callings. I think he senses anointings. I, I think he knows you know, spiritual movement. I think he senses spiritual movement because, you know, obviously he moves with evil spirits. And when I was younger, I had a motto in my life, and it was, I can't. I can't do this. I can't do that. I just, that was it. I felt as an absolute complete failure. I felt uh, I was fearful, I was weak, um, and, I, and whenever I was in school or at home, you know, somebody tried to even teach me anything. Well, I can't learn it. I just can't. And that went on for years and years and years. I was literally depressed with I can't do anything right, and I can't do anything good, and I can't learn anything. Well, it was of the devil, obviously, you know, and I learned that. And I learned that because one thing happened in my life that started to change my life. And it wasn't a big dramatic time in church. It was actually driving down 14th Street in, um, with my dad. And um, you have to understand my dad, he loved the Lord. But he was a man, they, they don't talk much. You know, and he didn't, um, he, he wasn't one of those that shared the gospel or what God was showing him or anything, you know, uh, it, it just didn't come out of his mouth. But never heard Dad actually speak to me privately anything about the Bible whatsoever. And here's what happened. We're driving down the road, and my dad turns to me, and he says, David, he says, the Lord showed me that you can do uh, exceedingly and abundantly and above all that you hope, ask, or think. And I'm sitting there going, what, what, what? And that was it. And he turned around. I asked him later on about that. He has no memory of it whatsoever. It was one of those divine things where God just came upon him, anointed him, because he probably wasn't going to speak it if he thought he should speak it. So it was one of those divine anointings where God just bypassed his brain and just spoke the prophetic word. 
So my father spoke a prophetic word into my life that I could do exceedingly and abundantly above all that I hope, ask, or think. Now, I know that verse is actually referring to that God can do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we hope, ask, or think. But think about it this way, that God was saying through my dad to me that he was going to do those things in me. That he was, God was going to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that I ever hoped, asked, or thought. And at that time, it did. I thought, wow, okay. Now, I didn't notice until the next few weeks and months. I had a different atmosphere. No longer was it, I can't, but I can do all things through Christ. It started to change in me. Now I'm to the place where if there's something I can't do, I give it extra attention. If there's something I don't know, I give it extra education because I want to know. So for that very reason. Now you say, well, Brother David, that's wonderful. I didn't have that kind of father. Oh, yeah, you do. You have a father that's been speaking those things volumes and volumes and volumes of what you can do in Christ. It's your heavenly father. He has declared and spoken and prophesied and he has set in motion promises for you. So your father has spoken piles of good news in your life. The difference has to be whether you receive it as a divine word from your father or not. When we receive it as God's divine word, it is the word of truth. And you know God's speaking about you, to you, because you're predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son. Well, what is that? You're to walk the way Christ walked. He's, I'm not talking about the fact is, is that you walk up the fig trees and curse them, but you do curse the things that are coming against you. I'm not talking about the fact is you're going to be walking on water, but you need to tread on serpents and scorpions and have power over all the enemy. Those are the things that God has spoken to us. Are we going to believe? Are we going to really believe that God is forth? And if God be for us, rhetorically, who is against you? Well, Brother David, they're at work, they're against me. Nobody's against you. You've got to look through them to God on the other side. You know, this, the economy is against me. You've got to look through it to the other side. We have to understand that if God is for us, the Bible says, literally, if I'll answer the rhetorical question, nobody can stand against you. That's the answer. Nobody can stand against you. No created thing. Well, did you know the devil is a creation? He's not divine. He was a creation. So no created thing is to have dominion and authority over you outside of the deity himself, Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. God is good, isn't he? So, in the days ahead, receive the prophetic word from God over you. Last verse, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power of that works in us. To him, verse 21, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. If, uh, if you've been in one of those situations where you've been more in focus with what's going wrong than you are in focus with what God has been doing for you, I'm here to say that you have, you have bad vision. You have bad sight. And you need to get rid of those old eyes and have new eyes. If you've been hearing what the world has to say and what discouragement has to say more than what God has to say, you've got bad hearing. You've got bad ears. You've got to get rid of those ears and get good ears so that you can actually walk in all that God has planned for you. Listen, if you would do one thing, just take rest. Let's just take rest in the Almighty. Because our yoke is to be easy and our burden, he says, is light. And I said light. Therefore, take the yoke upon you. For his burden is easy and his yoke is light. And you'll find rest, the Bible says, for your souls. Father, right now we pray for all those that are under the hearing of my voice that they would have divine rest. 
and that they would actually start a new life of abiding in a deeper place with the Most High. Because that's taking the yoke of God upon us, taking on Him, taking on His heart, His burden for humanity, His burden for our own life. That we would grow thereby and be strengthened by that. And Father, I pray also that if there's anybody that's watching this that doesn't know you, that Father God, this is their time. Maybe you've known the Lord in the past, but you have drifted away with the deceitfulness of riches or the lust of other things. It's time. It's time. God has prepared you for this day. So, Father, I thank you that as we repent or turn away from our own way and turn to the Lord, Lord, we ask you to forgive us of our sins. We repent and turn from our way, and we receive the fullness of Jesus Christ. Come into our life manifest your presence, take over, take over, have your full reign in our hearts, in Jesus' name, amen. I just want to thank you for joining us on our online service again this morning. And if you have any prayer requests or you would like to give, you can do that through our app. And also, you can subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss our next service. You can follow us on Facebook, download our app, all the links are in the description below. God bless, and I'll see you next week.